Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we are going to have a look at some of uh, the selections tomorrow. Um, we do also going to have we're also going to have an uh, analysis video for Sunday. So we're getting Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So hopefully we've got a, a few winners in these three videos. And we will start off looking at a race that I've actually already highlighted who I like here. This was in the Friday video as well. Um, that is Senior Chief at Cheltenham over three mile one for Henry de Bromhead. So they're coming over here to win this race. Uh, it's 52 grand for the winner, so it's good prize money. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty confident they're coming over to win this. Why do I, I really like the horse? So if we go back five runs, he finished third behind Sander Clogain and Della Casalunga in a series final race. Sander Clogain since then, I mean, last night he finished fourth in a grade one. He's finished fourth in a grade one. He's finished second in a grade three second in a grade two you can see that sandal clegane is a graded horse uh then four runs ago he finished third behind gaelic warrior and i know the way you're thinking had no chance there they're both grade one horses three runs ago second to manila kakuna off level weights manila kakuna has won a handicap in the uk off a mark of 151 bearing in mind that Senior Chief is running here off 142, so a nine pound lower mark. And we've got to remember Manila Kakuna won that, so he's actually up to 158. So if they if they reopposed in the UK, Manila Kakuna would be giving um Senior Chief 16 pounds. And yeah, he beat him off levels. He then went to Punchestown, Senior Chief, and beat Duffel Coat. Um that was a decent performance in itself. Duffel coat last time out was seen running in the Kerry National for mark of 145. Um, Senior Chief beat him. And then last time out, that was the only disappointing run. It was in the Irish National. He pulled up um, when making a few mistakes. He was also hampered by the faller three out. He pulled up when he went off 10 to 1 for an Irish National. Clearly uh, unexposed. And maybe that race just came too early in his chasing career. He'd only had the three runs before that. That third to Gaelic Warrior, second to Mena Kakuna, winning at Punchestown, and then they pitched him in at the deep end in the Irish National. This isn't as uh, difficult as an Irish National, in my opinion. And it's also back over a trip that we know he does like. Uh, three mile, did the three mile five just test him. His three mile form behind Manila Kakuna and beating Duffel Coat is obviously very good. Plus, they've put the cheek pieces on. I mean, they've given him every single chance they can of winning this race. Plus, it's the Irish Halls coming over. Uh, they did well a couple of last couple of years, um, Henry de Bromhead and Gavin Cromwell. And I think this is one that they're going to uh, pick up here. And that is Senior Chief, who can still be backed at sixes. I think he was 13 to 2 when we highlighted him yesterday. Moving on to the 255 at Cheltenham, the attempts qualifier. Now, this is a race that I'm not, I don't like these qualifiers because you can still finish in the top four and you don't have to win these races and you get in as long as your handicap mark is high enough. I have a feeling that this horse might be trying though, and that's Supreme Gift. I think some of the others might not be trying, particularly the likes of Botox Hass. Uh, he definitely doesn't need to, to try. Um, Gal Road probably doesn't need to try. You know, just get him qualified. The horses I were look at, was looking at were the two Irish um, in Al Gasparo and Como Park and Supreme Gift for Henry Daly. Now, the jockey booking is very eye-catching um, with Harry Cobden riding for Henry Daly. I think that's a really good uh, bit of um, uh, good jockey booking for sure. And also, if we look at his form, it's pretty good, especially over this sort of trip. So... Three miles at Ascot three runs ago. He was second behind Honor Gray when only losing by three quarters of a length of a mark of 126. Now, um, Honor Gray had come into that race off the back of a win previously at Aintree of mark of 120 when beating Glimpse of Gala. Now, he hadn't run for a while and then went to um, Ascot and won again. So maybe, you know, Honor Gray could just be very, very well handicapped still. So for... Supreme Gift to finish second and clear second. I thought it was a good effort. He then dropped him trip to two mile five and beat Arkoob. Now, I really like Arkoob. I think there is a handicap in him. I've actually highlighted a handicap for him in one of our previous uh, emails. The fourth place horse that day was uh, Josh the Boss, who's come out and won recently in the um, Silver Trophy. 
having been to Aintree after that, they went from finishing fourth to Supreme Gift to a grade one to winning the silver trophy. I mean, he just looks like he was actually very carefully and well placed. Then um, Supreme Gift went to Cheltenham. Uh, he finished third in a similar race to this, beaten by Zane Knights and Harbour Lake. He actually jumped the last bang there and he just looked like he was a little bit out of pace late on and maybe um, couldn't quite, you know, maybe he wants a little bit further. We're on to the old course rather than the new course and I think that will suit. Um, I think that will test him a little bit more. And he's a big price in comparison, especially to Zane Knights. If you like Zane Knights, who is, what race is this, the 255? Let's have a look. Zane Knights is down here at fives and 11 to two whereas Supreme Gift is nearly double the price at tens. Well, on their handicap marks, Supreme Gift was only beaten what, three lengths by Zane Knights. Zane Knights is going to run here off a mark of 130, so 11 pounds higher than what he carried. Supreme Gift is going to run off a one pound higher mark, so 10 pound. There's 10 pound pulls, sorry. So a 10 pound pull for a few lengths, you have to have them a similar price. And the fact that Zane Knights is still, you know, fives, 11 or two, Supreme Gift should be down there. Plus, we've got the jockey booking of Harry Cobden. We're running over the right trip. He's probably been beaten by the right horses. He does have some Cheltenham form, finishing third to Zane Knights and fourth to Williston. If you go back uh, uh, to April 2023, he finished fourth behind Williston, Bold Endeavour and Lallygag. Well, Williston and Bold Endeavour demonstrated they were well handicapped by then going to Haydock and finishing first and second in the long distance handicap hurdle. Whilst the third horse, Lallygag, is well handicapped. Just very, very frustrating. Um, he's won a couple of races since, hasn't he? At Newton Abbott, he's won a handicap hurdle. He's also won at Worcester in a handicap hurdle. Um, he's just a little bit tricky to get right, is Lallygag. So, I thought it was a good effort from uh, Supreme Gift that day. So he's got two good runs at Cheltenham. Harry Cobden booked, he's better off at the weight, he's at the wrong price in comparison to Zane Knights. I think Zane Knights is going to go well, and therefore I think Supreme Gift is going to go well. And at the prices, I'm quite happy to go with Supreme Gift here at 10 to 1. Moving on to the 405, we'll come back to the 330 because I'm going to do that in a slightly different type of bet. Um, we'll come back, uh, so the 405, who do I like here? I like Yates Star. I really do. I think this is, um, I think he's going to win this and I think he's going to demonstrate that he's actually very progressive. Some of his form last season was actually pretty good, especially when running over this sort of trip. So he actually only went up to this trip once last season over hurdles. He finished third behind Maxim and Geoff Kuhl. Now Maxim we had highlighted for the attempts final for a couple of years and he keeps ruining his handicap mark. Um, but he then he did go and win another race at Punchestown in May um, at 28 to 1 again, demonstrating that he was well handicapped. Whilst the runner up, Gaeth Chul, um, I'm going to be saying that wrong, is it Gaelic or, or something? He had come into the race off two seconds, winning at Leopardstown and then going back to Leopardstown. So that was really good form. So Yates Star finishing third in a very competitive handicap was a very good run. He then dropped back in trip to the Martin Pipe, the very, very competitive Martin Pipe. And he only went off 14 to one that day. Now in that type of race, going off 14 to one means you have a horse that is pretty nice to be honest. I mean, the horses that ended up going forward here, Better Days Ahead, Waterford Whispers, Key to Bourbon, Answer to K for Casa de Mort, I think they're all gonna win handicaps this year. Um, yes, it was a disappointing effort from Yates Star, he pulled up before the last, um, after being held up. Maybe it just didn't work. The drop back in trip probably didn't suit. He's come back this year. He stayed over that two and a half mile trip. Um, ran a good race on his return. Made a mistake at two out, which probably cost him all chance of winning. But then they went, okay, we're now going to step up in trip. They stepped slightly up in trip to Listol, uh, to two mile six. And won over two mile six. Beating Sport in the Park and Good Time Johnny. I like that form. I think that's really good form. I think that's better form than Theatre Man has produced. 
And I think he will be able to demonstrate that over three mile and further, this horse is very good. I think he's going to be a nice horse over three three mile and the type of horse that could end up in something like the old teamer at the end of the season, maybe even a national, an Irish national. Um, I think he's going to stay a lot further than this in time. And with that in mind, I think he might just run these into the ground, jump. Um, obviously, he's got the, the chase experience under his belt now. I think he's going to go forward and they might not see which way he goes. Gordon Elliott won't be running a five-year-old. I do like that he's five as well. Um, it won't be coming over here with a five-year-old if he doesn't think they can pick up this race at Cheltenham. So that's Yates Star that I like. Let's have a look at the price for him. I think he's second favourite. He is currently available at 11 to 4. I think um, I think he'll beat Theatre Man and I think that'll be good enough to win this race. We then go to Newbury. So on the flat, uh, we will come back to a race at Cheltenham, but I am... Um, Leaving that till last. So we go to Newbury for the 310, which is the Horace Hill Stakes. I'm I'm actually going to leave the big, the best race of the day, the Futurity Stakes. That one I'm not going to get involved in. The Group 3, um, over seven furlongs, I do like one. And that's Benevento. The market is suggesting it's a close race between Benevento and Yahrug. I don't know why I said it with a funny um, rolled letter there. Let's just load up the odds for this so that you can see. Yarug is five to two. Benevento is three, and I like Benevento. I think his form is very good. Um, he's only officially he's only rated two pounds lower than Yarug. They run off level weights, obviously. I think there's more to come from him, whereas I'm not sure there's a lot more to come from Yarug. I think he's kind of that will be his mark. Whereas Benevento will prove that he's a better horse than that. And as such, be able to win this race. I thought his form has been very good. He beat Bolognese um, at Yarmouth in a, in a maiden. Obviously, Bolognese has come out and won a um, Goffs 500 at the Curra. And he won it really impressively, didn't he, that day? Before going off 7-4 uh, to four favourite for a listed race. And he didn't run badly. Benevento then did get beat. But got beat by Soldier's Heart at Ripon in the two-year-old um, trophy. And I think that was all about speed. Um, he just looks rapid, that horse, at Soldier's Heart. I think he really appreciated Ripon. He got down the near side rail, I believe, made all the running, couldn't, uh, Benevento just couldn't keep up. Benevento then demonstrated that actually stepping up in trip really suited next time out, beating Symbol of Honour and the Wacko Kid. I think that is really strong form, and I think that's form to demonstrate that going forward, these are going to be that's going to be a strong form line. Um, the Wacko Kid obviously went to Newmarket and won the, the a Group 3 subsequently, beating Diego Ventura and Symbol of Honour. The right horse is there. Yeah, I, I like Benevento. I think um, I think these owners, Am I Racing, have saved a couple for the end of the season to go and win these group races when everything else kind of just starts disappearing. Um, I think Benevento is going to win tomorrow and beat Yarug. I kind of feel that maybe Bob Marley might be the biggest danger rather than Yarug because I think they both could be there's still more to come whereas I'm not as keen on Yarug showing a lot more to be honest. Moving on to the 450 at Newbury now this is a selection that I'm I it, this could look stupid because we don't currently have any odds. Um, it could look a stupid selection, this one in the 450, because he might get a terrible ride. But I think they're trying to win one of these. That is warning sign for David Dunstan. Now, David Dunstan has ridden this horse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times. He's finished second, third, second, 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 second. I mean, they're trying everything. He just can't quite get past that horse in front. But I was really taken by his effort last time out when he finished second at Ascot over seven, demonstrating that he had a bit of speed as well. Um, that came up off the back of finishing second behind Lord Melbourne in the amateur derby at Epsom. Lord Melbourne had gone off five to four favourite that day. And... With Mr. Walker on, he was never, you know, I don't think Warning Sign was ever going to beat him. Um, but it was a really good effort from Warning Sign over a mile and a half. I think 
you know that 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 demonstrates to me that the trip is no issue. We know that he's going to be really trying because he's going to be wanting to get a win into him. I mean, he's ridden him what did I say seven times now on six seconds. Um, they clearly want to get a win on the on the board with him. I think he can go really close here. Um, is there a ridiculously well handicapped horse in this race? Hopefully not. I'm just having a look. Does Simon have a ride? He does. He rides harder to do I mean, that could be anything, couldn't it? The former JP horse um, could absolutely wallop them here, or he could get completely uh, well beaten. Let's hope it's the latter, and David Dunstan can get a win to his name. Uh, just want to load up forecast prices. So I imagine harder to do could even be a bit of a gamble tomorrow. Um, over that mile and a half trip. Let's just have a look at a couple of things. Tomorrow, new brief, 450. Forecast prices are, oh, wow, they've actually got a forecast price of warning sign being the 7 to 2 favourite. If you can get 7 to 2 about him, I think he'll be uh, fine. Cheek pieces are on. I mean, I don't think it's the horse that needs cheek pieces. I think it's Mr. David Dunstan. Um, he just needs to be pushing as hard as he can for as long as he can. Um, and interestingly, Hard to Do De Ree has actually run already today. He was in the 151 today. I think. 141. That's been, hasn't it? Yes, it has been. Did he run? He did run. Did he win? I don't think so. Zakani won, I believe, uh, who was our top rated horse. So, Hard to Do De Ree not running. I mean, that would be a real positive for us and hopefully warning sign can win that race moving on to the 130 we've actually uh, the 130 at uh, Doncaster and we've actually mentioned this horse just briefly uh, in a form line with another horse that we've selected the one I like here is Diego Ventura to beat Bounty so that's not the bet I'm doing Diego Ventura I'm not doing him to beat Bounty in a forecast or anything uh, why do I like Diego Ventura at three to one Again, I think his form is really good. Um, one at Nace, they then purchased him, Wathan Racing, and sent him to Hamad El Jahani. Went to Ascot, won a race at Ascot, um, and then recently went to Newmarket for a Group 3 and got beat by the Wacko Kid. Now, as you know, I think that's a really strong bit of form. And I thought he was slowly away that day, and if he'd got away quicker, I think he would have gone a lot closer. That was a group three he's down to a listed race and it would not surprise me if they actually run shadow army here to set the pace for diego ventura they did it at royal ascot with a horse i can't remember who it was uh, it, they did it with a horse where they went forward made the pace um set it up for another one of theirs it, I think they might do that again with shadow army who has looked a little bit disappointing they're going to set this race up for diego ventura who does drop back in trip from seven to six. I don't think the seven really caught him out, but they know that the horse does stay a bit further. Um, I think Diego Ventura is the one to beat here. Also, the Aidan O'Brien horse uh, running in listed race is a bit weird for them. Normally they don't bother with listed and group, group three races. They go straight to group ones if they've got a horse. He only actually went off 11 to four favorite at the Curra, um two runs ago. Now, normally an Aidan O'Brien horse in against what looked a moderate field although there was a lot of runners it looked a moderate field normally if Aidan O'Brien's got a good one they go off significantly shorter than 11 to 4 and, and the fact that they didn't even win probably demonstrates that maybe it's not one of their better ones um yes it's a good horse don't get me wrong but I don't think it's going to be contesting the feature races next season whereas Diego Ventura could certainly do that as a three-year-old and I am hoping we can turn over the favourite here with Diego Ventura. Hopefully getting a nice toe through the race by Shadow Army. We keep going uh, on to the 205 at Doncaster. And we are going for one of the horses that I desperately want to see over six. But maybe the trip will bring, uh, the, the, the course will be enough to help this horse. So that is Abarama Gold, who we know is very well handicapped. Abarama Gold is very well handicapped. The last time the horse won was off a mark of... It was a little while ago now. Off a mark of 96 in a race at Doncaster over five furlongs. 
So the fact that it's running off 85, an £11 lower mark, it might have even been this race, you know, that it won last year. I think it is. The five furlong William Hill flat handicap farewell, 28th of October last year, uh, 25th this year. At 26th even, um, obviously it's tomorrow. Holly Doyle was very quickly booked. Um, there's no negatives about this horse. Maybe, well, maybe the only negative is, is five furlongs now far enough for this horse? I think there's a race in a few weeks' time at Doncaster over six that if it gets beat here, that's where we'll see it. Even if it wins, it might go back up to six. And uh, I'd probably be backing him in both. But although he's he's let us down a couple of times, you can still get seven to one about him here. So, you know, if he's let us down, what, twice, is he? Um, you back him here and you end up winning with a seven to one shot. You're plus five for those three runs. That would be fine. Um, I wouldn't be disappointed with that. So Abarama Gold under Holly Doyle at um, Doncaster. Moving on. Couple more to go. We stay at Doncaster here, the 315 at Doncaster, and we are going to go for a selection that got beat for us last time in the Reverend. So the Reverend went off a short price. I think we currently available at sixes, that would be fine. Uh, went off a short price last time out for a decent handicap at York, went off 11 to 8 favourite. In a race that featured Master Builder, Minstrel Knight, who's Glenn? All horses, I think, are, are quite nice. I think Master Builder um, is a future Stayers handicap horse. I'd like to see him over two, two and a half next season. The Reverend went off 11 to 8 favourite, really well supported over that mile and six trip. And disappointed. Definitely disappointed. Came there travelling really nicely, but was over the far side, which I don't think was the right place to be. In terms of the far side of the group, ended up running down the middle of the track rather than coming down the near side where it seemed to be um, the better place to be. Now, you also, Minstrel Knight won it, made virtually all. Philly Bustering was right behind, finished second. Master Builder and the Reverend probably gave them too much to do. We're dropping back in trip here at the Reverend. They've booked Ryan Moore, which is always a positive. And he's still a three-year-old. He's still very unexposed. Um, Ryan can ride him a little bit more positively and prominently and, and sit mid-division rather than right out the back. I think they rode him, do we get the trip? Um, I think the jockey probably came in and went, I'm not sure. So they've gone, okay, let's drop him back in trip. Let's go forward or sit right up there and use that stamina that we kind of feel is there to kick away at the end of the race um, in this race. And I think this is just a, another stepping stone um, on this horse's journey into group company. And they've gone, we might as well try and win that race rather than putting him away and coming back for another race over a mile and a half next year. They want to come back next year into graded uh, group races rather than a handicap. So they're going, let's win a handicap en route. So that is the Reverend. I think he will demonstrate that he is well handicapped. Um, and obviously Ryan being booked to ride is a huge positive. Currently available at sixes. Um, I imagine we'll get that about that elsewhere. I do like him. The final one in the singles is Navaggio. Now, Navaggio has got a really good jockey booking here in William Buick, which is always a positive. Um, and I think he's been booked because they want a good ride on the horse because they need, they probably need to win. And thanks very much. So let's just pause the video whilst I load up these other odds. Okay, and you can see Navaggio is currently available at 14. So I hope we get others pricing him up about the same. Why do I like Navaggio? Well, he's coming back to Doncaster, where he probably ran his best race of the season um, for James Horton. He finished third on his return this season on soft ground behind Mr. Professor, Mr. Professor and Latam in the Lincoln. Off a mark of 96, so he's actually going to run here off 86. A £10 lower mark, back at the course, back on the going. Now, OK, this is over seven, but they know he stays further, stays further. So they can certainly think about going forward on him, or at least racing more prominently than they usually do. 
And they've also got Wob 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 in this race uh, onto a winner. He's generally a six furlong horse. So seven furlong might test him. Just wonder whether they might be riding them together. And Wob 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 goes forward under PJ. William Buick sits and waits on Navaggio. Um, not too far behind. Picks up and go. And I think, it, you know, if they go like that, onto a winner could win this race with Navaggio. I think if they both sit and wait, I don't think they'll win the race. But if they set it up and they actually use one of their own horses as a pacemaker, yeah, I, I really like Navaggio under William Buick. He's going to give the horse a good ride for sure. And if they have any um, thoughts about getting back into that Lincoln next season, they probably need to win this. Currently rated 86, what got in last year. Uh, Alpha Crucis ran off 86, but he was two pounds out of the handicap. They're not going to want to do that. Spirit Genie uh, ran off 86. 86 was bottom weight. So if he got beat here and disappointed, he'd probably drop out of what got into the um, Lincoln last year. But, you know, they're rated 86. They could go and win this, go up to 90. They'd still turn up for the Lincoln next year off, off a six pounds lower mark um, for the Lincoln, where he finished third, where he was a little bit unlucky. That's how you, you can not worry about winning this race um, if they're thinking about the Lincoln as well. So that is my selection in the 425. Finally, we're going to have a small double. That is going to be on Bottler's Secret in the 330 at Cheltenham. Got the best form. Definitely got the best form. Um, that defeat by Cargess, that was really good form. Beat Pacini comfortably at Nace in a group th grade three. Beat Carl de Terrell in a grade two really comfortably. Only got beat in a grade one. Um, beating Nürburgring, beating Storm Hart. Got beat by Carl Jess, but Carl Jess is... What's Carl Jess been beaten by? Sergino, Majbra and Calaconte. And should have beaten Calaconte that day. Got absolutely um, badly hampered. So should, should have won two races, then gone to Cheltenham and finished second in a grade one. Finished second behind Sergino in a grade one and then won a grade one. Butler's Secret, I really think should win this comfortably. Um, and has been priced accordingly. Let's have a look. Uh, 330. Currently priced at even money. I actually think that's too big. I think even giving £8 to the likes of Gimme 5, that should just be far too... Like, Butler Secret should be far too good here. I think Butler Secret goes off odds on. The second horse that I want to include in the double comes from the 345 race at Newbury. And that is Al Arcee. Let's have a look at the price. Uh, currently available at 11 to 10. So let's put them both in and so you can see. Go. 3.2 to 1 double. I, I think they are both head and shoulders clear of their rivals. If we look at Al Arcee's um, official handicap marks, as in official uh, ratings, three pounds higher than Salt Bay, four pounds higher than Max Vega. I don't think any of those are going to get close. The second favourite is fourteen pounds wrong, uh, fourteen pounds lower rated than Al Arcee, and and for me hasn't really demonstrated that. The horse is even worth a rating of 98. I honestly don't believe our arse is going to get beat. I think back at Newbury, um, we know our arse runs well here. Beat Al Kareem here uh, two runs ago, obviously, then got the form reversed behind Al Kareem at Ascot. But you know what I think of that ride. It was a terrible ride. And interestingly, the BHA actually called the jockey in. An inquiry was held into the running and riding of uh, our arse. Um, despite me getting uh, shouted at for criticising the ride. I think we've got to be allowed to criticise rides if we think they're that bad. And if the BHA then um, inquire about it, it wasn't just me that thought it. Um, the BHA even thought it. So yeah, one at Newbury, um, over a mile and five. Has beaten Phantom Flight here before in, in uh, the Steventon Stakes. Yes, did get beat at the beginning of this season by Phantom Flight again. That was over a mile and two. A mile and four should be absolutely spot on for our RC. Um, 
I see no reason why our RC doesn't take all of the beating here. I think they're both miles clear of the rest here. Butler's Secret and our RC, and I want to include them in a double. So there are my selections for tomorrow. There's quite a few, and we will also be back for a uh, video tomorrow for some racing at uh, Aintree.